All right, everybody, and welcome to the 11th uh, financial charting tutorial with Python and Matplotlib. Where we left off, let me just bring up a chart to show you guys where we stand at the moment. This is it. Um, we've got a pretty respectable looking chart. We've got the line of open, high, low, and close line going on here. And we've got volume down here. We managed to get rid of uh, the tick stuff on the top plot's axis, but retain the bottom. We've got the labels on the side, title, and we've got share axes. So when we zoom into a specific spot, um, both of them will zoom in, including if you zoom in on maybe this one instead, you know. And then same thing if you were to move them around. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is talk about how to uh, begin um, analysis of the data. So now that we've we, you know we've learned how to plot the data. Now we want to move into more analysis. Now the most basic, I guess there's two really basic forms of analysis. One would be just moving averages, and the other is a candlestick chart. Um, so what we're going to do the first time is a candlestick chart, since that's actually probably the easiest thing to do next. Um, and then after the candlestick, we'll move into doing just simple moving averages. So um, so let's close out of this and talk about what we need, what changes we need to make uh, for this candlestick chart. So if you're familiar with candlestick charts, as you can imagine, um, there's a little bit of functionality that's going to have to be changed in order to do a candlestick chart. So the first thing we want to do is actually import something from Matplotlib that allows us to do candlestick uh, charts. Luckily for you, you know they've done a lot of the programming already for us. So what we want to do is from matplotlib.finance import candlestick. Um, Matplotlib Finance has two forms of candlestick charting. One is candlestick, one is candlestick two. Um, you might think candlestick two would operate more easily with this, but actually, at least I can't figure it out. So we're just going to use the regular candlestick plotting. If someone knows how we could use the straight up candlestick two and throw in these parameters, my problem is the date. I don't really know how we're supposed to throw in the date to candlestick two. Um, so anyway, we're going to use regular candlestick, and the way that we're going to go around it is a little hacky, but I, I don't see any other better way. So um, so once we've imported candlestick, the next thing that we're going to want to do is engage in our little um, or way that we're going to start building um, the candlestick data. So to do this, what we need um, is a line. The, the way candlestick is going to work is you're going to tell it, you're going to literally write out candlestick, and then you'll have like, you'll say what axis it's going to be corresponding to, and then you've got like the data, right? And that's it. And then width, and you start specifying stuff for the candlestick chart. But data, um, holds with it uh, date and then in very specific order it goes open close high low you have to put it in that order otherwise it's gonna like look really weird so um, so we need to create a data variable and then put everything in that data variable that has date comma uh, open comma close comma high comma low comma um, and we can throw volume in there as well so we'll do that so anyway, that's how, what we need to do. So let's start making that. And the best way I can think of to do this is to use a while loop as a counter and just build this array. So that's what we're going to do. So first we're just going to say x equals 0, y um, equals the length of date. So date array. You could also do length of close p. It doesn't really matter. Um, now we're going to say uh, data, uh, I guess we'll, we'll call this candle array. Um, and that's going to be an empty array for now, but then we're going to start populating it in one moment. So we're going to say while x is less than y, um, we're going to make uh, append line. This is what we're going to append to this array. It's going to be date and then whatever x uh, we're on, followed by open p, followed uh, with the x, followed by close p, x. Um, high p x and low p x followed by volume x. 
So that'll make our line. Now we need to make this line dynamic. Well, actually, first let's append it. So we'll do candle array die append. And what we want to append to it is this line. And now let's make this a dynamic, which is x plus equal 1. So every time it runs through, this is going to add 1 to x. And we started with 0, so we start on the 0th element of all these things, and we just keep adding 1. And it's going to continue doing that until x is no longer less than y. So that's how we're going to build the array. Like I said, probably not the best way to go around it or go about doing this, but um, it's the best in least complex way that I could think of doing it real quick. Um, and just like before, um, well, probably the what we would do if we wanted to clean this up a little bit is instead of doing this numpy array, well, let me explain why we have to use the, first we need to convert this date variable. It needs to be in the days format. Um, so like Unix is the number of seconds after um, January 1st, 1970. We need this to be in the days format that matplotlib and numpy will kind of correspond with. And I'm not too sure how they calculate this days format, but it is, I, I believe it's actually like a number of days. Um, so it, the number will increase by one, but I, I don't know where the days are actually beginning in this, this thing. Um, so if anybody knows how they're actually deriving like the starting point, or where the starting point of these days is, feel free to let me know. Because then you could actually convert from a Unix stamp to this you know days format but i uh, i don't know how to do it so anyway but it is it's in like like each increment of one is one day basically so anyway continuing on um so we want to use that conversion to date and then we might as well just use the rest of the stuff that we've you know pulled so anyway that's how we're doing it so now the next thing that we want to do is uh make our candlestick chart and because we're doing that, we don't, no longer need any of this stuff right here, right? So we can just delete that. And now let's specify a candlestick, like I was saying. And the parameters here are where are we doing it, and that's uh, AX1. Now, what is the data that we're going to use? Well, we define that as candle, oops, candle array. And then we want to say uh, the width of our open high low, or our candlestick stuff. For now, we'll just say one. You can kind of mess with that. It depends on like the granularity of your data, really, how wide you want that to be. Um, and then you can start specifying color up and color down. So like, if the if the chart is you know increasing, what color do you want it to be? And if it's decreasing, what color do you want it to be? Now you can do whatever you want. You can even throw like hex colors into here. But um, just for the sake of doing it like everyone does it, um, oops, color up. We're gonna call that green and color down, we're going to call that red. Um, so that's just the way everyone does it. But you can make it like a specific color of green and a specific color of red with, with uh, hex color codes if you wanted. Um, but we're just going to leave it like that for now. So unless I've missed something, that is everything we need to convert our graph to a candlestick chart. So let's go ahead and save it and run it and see where we stand. Let's see. Oh, okay, we typoed up here um, from O. Okay, so save that, run it, and yes. So here we go. Uh, we've now converted it to a candlestick chart, and our width looks to be about right. Some of these are kind of overlapping with each other, but if we you know, like zoom in to a specific spot, um, they're actually a decent size. They are kind of overlapping, but that's okay. So you can make it like maybe 0.8, something like that. Um, and obviously, every, you know, all of our parameters are still existing. We can still move this around and stuff. So... Um, so yeah, we did it right. We made our chart, and just for the sake, let's uh, let's try and edit this width to a point. Let's just point seven five. Let's see if we can do that. And zoom in a little better. Um, anyway, you can mess with that if you want. Um, but uh, that is how you make a candlestick chart. So. Hopefully you guys are making some cool candlestick charts now and you're enjoying this. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and the future, I think probably the next video what we'll do is we'll customize this chart um, a little bit more. Like I said before, you make more money if the chart looks like badass. So I think that's going to be the next thing that we do is kind of make this chart a little cooler looking. 
Uh, so right now it's just kind of eh. So that's probably what we'll do in the next tutorial. I'm not sure when I'll put that out, but eventually I'll put it out. Um, so anyway, yep, thanks for watching, and until next time.